in Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, there are a ton of settings that you should literally never turn on and yet you probably still use them. Some of these settings will actually make you worse at the game, so I thought I'd make this video to let you know which settings you probably need to turn off. As with most games these days, these settings are turned on by default and even though sometimes it's good to have some of these settings turned on, here's the 8 settings in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League that you need to turn off. Most games these days are better played at higher fields of view, especially if you've got a current gen console or high end PC that can handle the maximum settings which can turn any game into a real life simulator. Suicide Squad is no different and it really is as next gen as they come. From the stunning cutscenes to the awesome character models and visual effects, Suicide Squad really leans into what the upgraded Unreal Engine 4 can offer, putting it into consideration of what the new Unreal 5 engine offers at the moment and I know the devs have spent a ton of time optimising the game for it. And this is why I think that you should 100% change this setting so that you can see the most that this game has to offer. By default, Suicide Squad's field of view is set to about 70, which really narrows down what you can see with the fast paced free flowing combat and although it can feel good to play, you absolutely should be cranking this setting all the way up. Bigger is always better and don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. With a field of view at 110, the graphical upgrade that you receive from this is a huge positive in my opinion and as the game runs at a standard 60 frames per second on console, it really grants some huge immersion into the world created by Rocksteady. Combined with the rest of the setting changes in this video, you're really not going to miss playing at that lower field of view and the fishbowl effect that you can get from higher fields of view is minimal to be honest but the eye candy you get from making this simple change will more than make up for it. Again, fiddle with this setting in the video section of the options menu but if you do crank this one all the way up, you will benefit from seeing more of this breathtaking scenery by changing this setting. Sticking with video options, there's a ton more options that go hand in hand with field of view and to be honest I'd look at keeping most of these settings turned on, especially during the story campaign part of the game just to add to that cinematic vibe this game offers. However, once you've hit the end game, high difficulty activities and look to rack that combo score to the moon, this section should change significantly. Motion Blur is basically a setting that you only keep on if you want to see less stuff in the game. It adds an awful smear effect to your screen whenever there's any amount of movement and in Suicide Squad there's a lot of movement. Plus with the setting changes in this video, there's going to be a lot more movement more often and so I think you're definitely going to want to turn this motion blur setting off. With the high enemy density in the majority of the game, having motion blur on is going to make them way harder to see, especially as you're turning around to face them and therefore it'll make aiming your weapons or abilities more difficult as you literally won't even be able to see them until you've stopped moving. It also makes enemies appear bigger because of the blur but you can easily miss your shots even with the high aim assist this game offers. It makes you react slower and less accurately, it can be a benefit at super low frame rates but you have to trust me on this one and just turn it off. It is definitely not a setting that you want to be using. Likewise with lens flare, bloom, chromatic aberration and film grain, these are all post processing options which can slow down the game, impact your accuracy at targeting them pesky snipers and just generally give you a bit of a headache like you've been walloped over the head by Harley That's Quinn. This next setting is a super minor one to be honest and ultimately it probably comes down to personal preference. The heads up display for Kill the Justice League is very busy and with lots of stuff to take in when it comes to adjusting your characters, loadouts, outfits or finding the next target to keep your combo going, the last thing you want is more screen space being taken up with subtitle text of the constant wittering and jibes by the squad. Plus I find it to be immersion breaking especially during cutscenes as my eyes are constantly drawn to reading instead of just watching so I definitely turn subtitles off. However, if you do need subtitles on so that you're not disturbing your household during a late night gaming session, you can switch it on with options to even adjust the text size, colour and background. I personally use a monitor and sit a few feet away from the screen so I find a normal text size is a good setting for me but definitely fiddle with this for your own personal preference. There's even a sweet dynamic range setting for your audio which goes hand in hand with this to adjust the loudness of the biggest booms in the game. Speaking of combat, there's an absolute metric ton of it in the Suicide Squad as you might expect. So unless you want to end your epic play session feeling like you spent a full day on the power tools, you may want to turn vibration off. 
You can leave it on if you really want, but I recommend turning it off if you care about hitting your targets or placing your abilities exactly where you want them. This only applies to controller vibration, and even though I understand you might love the immersion provided by this neat bit of technology, but turning it off might just extend the lifespan of your controller as you don't need to hold it so hard, and it's also going to make your hands less tired in the long run. It also drains your battery quicker with it turned on, and you won't miss it if you get used to relying on your in-game radar, sound effects, and keeping an eye on your health bar or visuals provided. Now that we've saved your hands, it's time to save your sanity, but to be honest, you're playing the Suicide Squad game, so you probably don't have much of it left. However, for the squeamish out there, there's a setting that will allow you to sleep a little bit easier at night. Turn this setting on to disable neck graphic bomb effects. It's pretty much what it says on the tin, and even though this is a PEGI 18 rated game, there's always a limit to the amount of violence you can take in one gaming session, so go ahead and turn this setting on if you can't handle it. The Suicide Squad is a story about inclusion that no matter your past and differences, you can come together to do something good, even in a bad way. You get my point, unfortunately Rocksteady does too, as Suicide Squad comes with a ton of accessibility options, with the main one being a variety of colourblind mode options. You can cycle through these as to which is the best for your personal circumstances, and there's even an extensive customization list for these to change the elements of each colour as you wish. Even if you don't need to change these settings to make the game more accessible for you, you can change the colours to suit your preferences to make your reticles stand out more, or even just go for full grayscale, which affects everything from your HUD, in-game pop-ups and menu icons. Suicide Squad has a selection of banging tunes and iconic music that play throughout a variety of gameplay moments, so you don't want to miss out on the impact the score of the game brings by accidentally turning this setting on. Streamer mode is great if you're Ninja or Dr. Disrespect, as it'll allow you to stream and upload videos to the internet without being hit by DMCAs from the Suicide Squad overlords at Warner Brothers Studios. Keep this setting turned off though if you're not Ninja to get the full experience. Suicide Squad isn't the most difficult game out there, let's be honest, and the best piece of advice I ever had was to always play a game on the hardest setting to get the full experience of the enemy AI, pushing your skills and knowledge of the game to the limit. Limits. This all started for me with the Halo series where the devs advised to play it on the heroic setting, and so here I'd recommend knocking the difficulty up to the highest currently available, sweating bullets. It's no walk in the park and you best pay attention whilst you're sweating bullets, but the beauty is that you'll actually get boosted XP and resources from playing in this higher difficulty mode, which can make all the difference in the early game and prepare you for the grind towards min-maxing your builds with notorious and infamous gear sets in the end game. Now it's time to find out more stuff that you didn't know about the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League by watching this video next.